I, f I feel like I've been accepted into a, a very special private world. The close relationship we got to have with the Boston Symphony Flute section was really cool. You, you work with some of the most fantastic coaches in the country, in the world really. My favorite part had to be collaborating with the great music directors. Playing Mahler One with Doc Nani was definitely a highlight. I'm playing a Brahms piano trio and Yo-Yo Ma is going to be my coach, so that's very exciting. I don't think there's anything like Tanglewood. <laughs> The personality of a percussionist is um, laid back. A percussionist is, on a technical level, somebody who strikes something for a musical purpose. Our role is either rhythmic, melodic, or textual, or a combination of those. We focus on getting these sounds to blend with all the other instruments of the orchestra. You know, it sounds like a gig of one out there, man. Will is a great musician. Yeah, I, think that, I think that would sound a lot better, actually. He's very to the point. And the China type, if you could find a way to uh, maybe strike either like really, you know, yeah, yeah. Or, or maybe here, oh, like yeah, flat little, stick, right, something right. like that. So just more. Something that'll be more of a, yeah. more of a, of a charge. And he tells you, what he thinks, and it's it's pretty direct. Okay, let's go in the beginning again. Then. I really like the Christopher Ross. I think it's super fun. So it's nice to start with a percussion ensemble piece that uses all of us. So it's a good way for us to get to know each other and get to know each other's playing. And it's definitely. Tribal. What is it called? It's called a kick up. You just pull on through, like, kind of slide your hand on this thing. I picked percussion in fourth grade at this little instrument demonstration where they demonstrated all of the instruments. I just thought percussion was cool. It's my great pleasure to welcome all of you and most especially the fellows of the 2014 class of the Tanglewood Music Center to our opening exercises, 74 years since the center opened in 1940. Opening exercises serves as a time when we introduce everyone to each other and end up with the singing of the Randall Thompson Alleluia. The Alleluia was written on commission from Serge Kusevitsky for the very first opening exercises. The opening exercises is very evocative of tradition and of the history of Tanglewood. It sort of ties it all together in a one, one beautiful experience. Since we are all together, and after all, music is an experiential art. I wonder if you would indulge me in a quick three-dimensional exercise. Everyone who can, please stand. Now, touch the people next to you. This is our horizontal connection. It is with each other that we will make a success of this summer. Make sure you know the name of your neighbor. Let's make the third dimension, third dimensional connection by reaching forward, connecting from the stage to the audience. The personal gifts that we have, the connections we make within our community must be shared with our audience. 
In giving, we make our experiences tangible to others. Thank you for indulging me. Please sit down. People that apply to Tanglewood are a self-selected pool. If they're in conservatory, they know colleagues that have been accepted and colleagues that have been rejected. And so they have an idea about how good you need to be to be able to get in. This is my 30th summer here, and I've been doing the auditions for a good part of that. The thing that I look for is somebody that can make a real serious, wonderful contribution to the festival and also somebody that's really primed to get the most out of what it is that we have to offer for them. This woodwind quintet no one has actually ever played before, so we're all new to the music. It's a difficult piece, and so I tried to score study the night before a little bit, so that in the rehearsal we kind of could know where to go. <laughs> but I was pretty excited to get the score on my iPad. That's my first time using technology. <laughs> okay. It's a great group. We're all getting along. Everyone has good opinions. Everyone's throwing them out there. So it's been really fun so far. More fun than I think we all expected for a woodwind quintet. Okay. It takes some time to figure out the personalities in a new group. Some people are shyer, some people are more outspoken, and you kind of need, I think, a good balance of that. So, oh, you guys all have the down. Uh, um, I guess our tenutos are probably a little bit too short right now. I have a lot of opinions, I guess, and I like to speak my mind. Some people are a little bit shy about speaking up, and I'm usually the person who is not scared to throw my word in there. Or like the measure before the measure before that. So you say, let's try this, and someone says, I don't like that. Can we try this? And then you try both ways, and you vote in a group. But actually, that's the part that like really we should be lining up all the time. Me and you? Yeah. Good thing about a woodwind quintet is there's five members, so with the vote, there's always a final decision. <laughs> Doing master classes, it's a great way to perform a piece. You get nervous because you're doing it in front of an audience of your peers. We made uh, room for everything to happen, and all of the 60s. Can everybody hear me? Mr. Sokol was a part of a really great quartet, and he has such like a specific and attentive ear. He played this really well. <clears throat> Last summer, he was one of my coaches, and I just remember. Like every note that you played, he would question, and you had to have like an intent, and which you should do. But it just that degree of expectation from a coach is um, changes the way you think about how you're playing. Which is this first movement is really virtuoso, really virtuoso. Uh, on the on the surface, da da da, bum 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 bum, you have that, but boy, behind it is all this stuff. Man. I think you should just let it fly and play a little bit more on like soloists, especially the cello, you need more bass. All he wanted more bass from me, kind of getting to know your space. In, in a practice room, I was sound really loud, but in, in a hall, a bass won't carry the same way, so it's good to get those kind of, that kind of feedback. Use a little more propulsion and to, you know, test each other a little bit. Somebody wants to play in 16, so a little faster, play a little faster, the other people have to keep up. Take some chances. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. The standard here is very high. I'm here to get better. How do you get better? A big part of it is having feedback. Well, from videoing yourself is a huge part of the process for me. There's only a certain amount that you can realize while you're doing it. But if you see it as if you were watching yourself, that is a huge part of the process. I'm here for eight weeks and I'm conducting almost every day. 
So that's a major chunk of time that I'm able to have daily feedback. And then of course, the main thing is Stefan's comments because he is extremely experienced and he's very, very sharp and, and very observant. Do, do we have time to do it again? The whole thing though. I don't even need to, to be honest. Okay. I just have to ask what I'm going to do. Stefan sees exactly what is going on in my head because he knows from his own experience. Are you going to go faster and then do it, or is it, is it just a good upbeat and then He'll just call me out on a whole number of things that most people wouldn't necessarily be able to articulate or notice, but it's that conductor to conductor communication which really sadly doesn't happen that often. Yeah. In the real world. I would suggest here is keep it straight. You went into a bit of the. the yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Um, you can just go from here. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. Just to six? have him there every single day, telling you what was good and what wasn't good, is pretty great for me. Part of being a conductor is that whatever insecurities you have have to be completely left at home. You can't bring them up there. Yeah, actually it's the way you give it. If you go, it'll okay. sound great. If you go check buff, we get this kick. So it's more of it's when someone is giving you feedback, you know, you still want to maintain your authority and respect from the players who are sitting there watching this whole interaction. I still think it's too loud. It doesn't, it, when you come in out after the, taking the meat out, in my opinion, it's not different enough. I think it needs to be just loud. We did it right yesterday, but now it's not like. Stefan is actually really good about that. He's really sensitive to it. He does not want to make anybody look bad. He knows that, you know, it's important that the conducting fellows also maintain a certain, um, a little bit of distance from the players. You don't want them to start to think that the conducting fellow is somehow experimenting on the orchestra. I think everyone who's here, hopefully, as a conducting fellow, is you've gotten to a point as a conductor where you have your thing that you do in front of the orchestra, and you're, and you're pretty comfortable and confident with that. We're all here as students. You come here because you want to be a student again. That's what it is. If you don't want that, and you just want to be told you're great all the time, don't come to Tanglewood. <laughs> I guess now it's two years ago. Uh, I didn't play for anyone basically all year, no teachers, and then I came here to Tanglewood last summer, and all of a sudden Miss Rowe was yelling, pitch, pitch, you're out of tune, your intonation, it's bad. And I remember after the first class being so upset and so happy at the same time because it was someone who found my weakness that I was ignoring in my own playing, which kind of, you know, I don't know, cracked me open <laughs> and said, fix it. <laughs> The whole quintet is in love with Miss Rowe. She was a really amazing coach. She has a way of speaking to us that is inspirational, nice, and extremely direct and demanding all at the same time, which is a very difficult skill to have as a teacher, I think. So you got through it beautifully, really nicely together, and pretty cautious, and pretty much like you guys were just sort of really being careful to track. When you're coaching a group, there's always a balance between trying to work specifically on that particular piece and also impart a little bit of information about general musicianship. Even when the writing was... You know, you, you try different techniques to kind of get them to, to come together as a group and cohere, because part of the other challenge out here is that these are all brand new groups that are new to each other. I think this group, all five of them had were complete strangers to each other. So it was really a challenge just to, to develop kind of a group sound and a rapport and all of that. It was impeccably together, now we've got to get it to flow because it felt a little stuck. She treated us almost like her colleagues, 
which I was always surprised at because she's one of the best flute players in the world right now, I think. Now can you do like more of a stealth attack? What I do when a teacher asks me to do something differently, I try to pause for a second and imagine myself doing it mentally first. So I imagine what I want it to sound like, what I need to do physically to make it sound like that before I actually start doing it on the instrument. Masha is a sponge. This is our second summer having her here, and last summer she was in a little bit of a transition point with her flute playing, and I pushed her a little bit and um, wasn't sure if that would have been helpful to her last summer. We see them very in-depth and very intensively, but only for a short period of time over the summer, and she came back this year self-possessed and mature and strong. She took everything that we gave her last summer and ran with it, which is pretty unusual. Yeah. We had our dress at 10.30 the night before our concert because they had to fit in all 14 quartets all day. It's, it, it's basically really, really together and creative and it's constantly changing, it's wonderful. There are just a few details of balance that are a bit wacky. Mm -hmm. A goal that we kind of had as a group is to feel free and in the moment when you play and to be able to make a decision during a performance. A lot of the kind of communicating that you see, like looking at each other, is just checking in. You have to know that they're listening to your decisions and that they're going to respond. One of the aims of this week is to get the musicians comfortable with and excited about working in Ozawa Holy. By the time they play their concerts, which they do at the String Quartet Marathon, in the brass concert, and in several other chamber concerts that we have that very first week, they really have a sense of how to make the hall work for them and how they can work in the hall. Before I go on stage, I try to empty my mind, kind of a zen place a little bit. I'm not thinking anything specific. You've done so much detailed preparation Especially here, you've been sort of trying to maybe change things, adjust things, new ways of thinking, new ways of moving. Um, and I just remove all of that before I go on stage. I just exhale and then just think about the piece, you know.
all my closest friends are woodwind players. I think woodwind players tend to be perhaps a little bit nerdier than other people in the orchestra. Someone said when they met me the first day, they said, oh, I definitely thought you were a food player. I wasn't sure whether to take that as an insult or compliment. It was nice to go back and be on stage performing in front of all the people with the doors open and people sitting on the lawn and it's just beautiful. I was just like, ah, it's good to be back here. The maples in front of you are about halfway through their uh, their their second quartet, so we're we're coming Wait, right up. Okay. Let's go, Ross. I We do not believe that we Germans are the highest and noblest of peoples, quote, a canary among a flock of sparrows, unquote. <laughs> 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 <laughs>